options is this Win 10 XPE environment. And I want to show you today how um, to create one and um, so that then you could stick it on a, um, you know, either burn it uh, to a uh, USB uh, flash drive or add it to Ventoy. Uh, that's what I do and have it as a choice. Um, this is an example of the screen up here. You've got quite a number of um, utilities out there that uh, come with it that allow you to um, you know get information on the unit uh, do things like um, you know again like partitioning the tools um, I'll also show you in here how I like to add the uh, crystal um, disk utilities especially things like the um, uh, disk mark just to see how fast uh, some of the um, M.2 drives maybe I'm adding to a system. So let's uh, let's begin. Okay, a couple things that I, I assume um, you're going to already have installed on your system. And uh, one of those is 7-Zip. You're gonna need that in order to be able to um, uh, extract and rebuild uh, the basic setup and environment for the uh, Win 10 XPE. I uh, want that installed. The other thing is, is that we're, we are going to have to download the a Windows 10 um, ISO. Uh, you know, we're not doing anything illegal, but since ISO is just an installer uh, in essence, uh, but you will need a slightly older version um, on the information page for the Win 10 XPE, it recommends um, right at the bottom here that you get the uh, 20H1. And so what I did was I did a search for that, download Windows 10 20H1 ISO. A lot of different little places here and there. The one that I felt most uh, comfortable with was the uh, Internet Archive. And I just went in there um, pick the ISO image, it's 4.9 gig, so it will take a little bit to download, uh, depending on your, your speed. Uh, there are a lot of other places you might be able to get. I'll leave that up to you as far as where you want to pull it from. Um, I just felt most comfortable with uh, Internet Archive. What you want to do is um, do a search for Win 10 XPE download and you want to go to this GitHub uh, link to be able to get uh, the information, the, the file there. Then we're going to be grabbing the, um, uh, tw this 2023 0823. Maybe by the time you're watching, this might be a little later. You want to click on the link here. And then you've got, uh, they call it source code, uh, but really it's, it's the file. I'm going to do a uh, save link as. I'm going to save it on my C drive. It's a zip file. Not too big, 222 megabytes. Okay, I found the folder that I, that, uh, I saved that zip file to. Uh, I'm going to right click on it and extract all the files. It will just put it into a folder beneath there with the same name. And you'll notice there's a readme, there's a PDF, and then there are these three guys here. These will all combine to create the actual folder that has the information in it. So now we want to open that 001 file. We're going to do a search for 7-zip. Bring up the file manager. Open up the computer, C drive. I've got my uh, downloads. I've got that folder. And now if I double click on the 001, it's smart enough to know 
that 001 is the first piece of it. So again, what we're going to want to do, go back up to our downloads. Actually, this time, let's go at a higher level. We'll go to the top level of our PC. And we're just going to drag that over there. And it will extract um, all of the files from both the, um, the 001, 002, 003 folders. OK. At that point, we're done with 7-zip. Come down, we should have a Win 10 XPE folder. Okay, that looks good. I'm now going back to my downloads folder, and I've previously downloaded from that uh, Internet Archive site the ISO file. I'm going to right click and do a mount. You may get a warning message, and you can say proceed. It's going to say, you know, do you trust where this comes from? So that creates our um, E drive. We'll create a folder here. We'll say new folder. We'll call it Win 10 DVD. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to send it over there. Okay, that's done. Now we can go back to the C, we'll go into the WinXPE folder, we'll launch it. It's going to always ask if um, it's okay, you know, basically open it as admin. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to choose this that says select the Windows 10 or 11 source folder. We can go into Local C, we'll go into Downloads, and we'll pick that uh, Win 10 DVD. Okay. Uh, you'll know you have the right one because this build will be 19041. Now what we want to do is set a couple other um, areas in here. What I like to do is go through and you can check your various components, you know, kinds of stuff that you want, um, you know, added in. So as example, under hardware, I really like this, the mini tool. I'm really used to it. So I'm going to pick that guy. Um, see, file, that looks fine. Hardware info, I like uh, CPU-Z. We'll add that in there. I believe. Um, you can choose whether or not if you want Chrome or if you want Firefox. Recovery, registry, security, system tools. If we go back to build core, what we want to do is click on where it says add your custom folder. And this folder is going to be underneath the uh, Win 10 XPE. This will allow us to throw in additional um, programs. And I'm going to be throwing in the um, uh, folders for uh, the, the two crystal utilities. What you want to look for is underneath the WinXPE folder. There's a folder called Custom, then X64, Additional Files, Program Files. And then what I did on my local C, where I had installed Crystal, um, the Disk Info, and the Crystal Disk Mark, just highlight both of those. And copy them over. But we'll also want to edit this um, PEC command INI file because we want to set some links so that um, when it comes up on the desktop, you will be able to access them. So what we want to do is we want to look for this area called shortcuts. And we can keep coming down until we see the underscore end. Open up a little bit. Uh, 
I'm going to add the two links. Essentially, you have um, where you're saying where you want it to be. In this case, we want on the desktop something called Crystal Disk Info, and it's going to pull it from the program files, Crystal Disk Info, Disk Info 64EXE, and also Disk Mark 64EXE. So we'll create that link. Let's save that. So once we have the custom folder set, uh, we've edited the uh, this uh, pecmd.ini, we want to hit on play. And then this is going to build, um, add all of our um, files, build the core. It could take a little bit from the beginning. And you'll see it will do like two of 37. You may get warnings along the way um, from uh, Windows Defender and so forth because uh, some of the stuff that it's using, uh, for some reason it doesn't like, like uh, some of the utilities that uh, um, I think do stuff with the registry or clean things out, uh, but I just let it, let it run. So this is the fun of using this tool sometimes. Uh, it had some issue with copying the um, IOME partition assistant. So, uh, and I've, we may encounter an issue with uh, Chrome also. So I think we, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna uncheck this partition. So we already have this guy. Um, there's an issue with Chrome setting it as your default browser with file association. So I'm gonna uncheck that. Then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna try the play again and let's see what happens. Unfortunately, it tends to then start all over again. So, um, and even when I was doing this uh, before, the first time I did it, everything was fine. And then trying it on different environments, it um, would give errors. So, um, you know, be patient. And if it doesn't go right the first time, you may have to um, kill off some components uh, to see if you can get it to where you want it to be, or perhaps, um, you know, dial it down to where it's really the stuff you're really gonna be using. Okay, now that we've finished building the core, we can come down here where it says create ISO. And um, we want to make sure to create the uh, boot, vim, and, and ISO. So we'll click on that. When I was doing some testing before, Sometimes this ISO would be half this size. And so then what I ended up having to do was click on this create ISO and then that seemed to take care of it. So now what we can do is we can test this um, ISO uh, using uh, Proxmox and see if um, our files and such are, are where they're supposed to be. So what I did was I created a virtual machine and I added for the CD drive, I pointed to the ISO file that we just created. I copied it up to a um, directory that, that uh, where I pull my ISOs from. I also created a hard disk just to have something to kind of play with. And in the um, options, I made sure that the boot order put the ISO at the top so that that way it doesn't try to boot from this um, hard drive that really doesn't have anything on it. So let's see what happens when we tell it to start. And we'll go into the console. All right, it's a good sign when we get the loading of the files. That means at least the boot is correct. Okay, it should start going in. We got our little Windows icon. Okay, configuration in progress. 
All right, very good sign. You'll notice that we've got the crystal disk info. We'll close that. We've got the crystal disk info and the um, disk, uh, um, uh, you know, um, for the for the benchmarks. And if we also look, we can see that under programs for let's see, five, hard disk, we've got our mini tool partition wizard. If we launch it, it always wants to come up and say, "Hey, there's a newer one. Would you like it?" Uh, no, I don't want it. So. Uh, previously, what I had done was I had formatted the drive, but if we wanted to, when we first went in, if this was a brand new um, setup, um, it would show that there is no partition. So it, it would look similar to, we'll let it, let it do its thing. This, it would look like this, un unallocated. So what we would do is we would come in, we would say create partition, um, we'll call it a uh, new one, uh, we'll say okay, um, we'll apply, go for it. And everything's been applied, we come out of here. If we look on um, the drive, We've got the new one, which is the C drive. We've got these three, which get created by the Win 10 XPE. If we double click and let's try the, the disk info, it's gonna say that we've got a um, you know, 20 gig, 21 gig uh, um, drive there. Some, you know, it's all fake obviously because it's, it's a virtual drive, but we could run the um, benchmarks against it. They're not uh, tremendously fast, but uh, you know, at least it kind of gives you an idea, especially if we actually had, um, was running this uh, through Ventoy and, or had created a, um, uh, a bootable um, USB drive. Okay, there we have some um, results starting to come in. What's really funny is if you do the, uh, what is it, that X drive? Let's see how that one does. Oh, disk capacity. And con uh, let's try, I think the B maybe? Let's see what that if that does it. That one gives some tremendously fast uh, speeds. I think the B, B is a RAM disk, so that would make sense. I, oh yeah, there we go, 7,000. So yeah, it's, it's smoking. So uh, looks like it worked. And now we can use this, uh, we, you know, we could go back and add other utilities to it if we wanted to, uh, maybe remove some just to, uh, um, you know, make it so it's not so, uh, uh, but if we look, let's see, task manager, uh, we gave it, let's see, I think, yeah, we only gave it like four gig to run under uh, for the virtual. One thing I would say when getting ready to build your uh, Win 10 XPE, I would probably do it on a virtual Windows uh, machine. That way what you can do is uh, go with a very base fresh copy if you can. Everything's working, you got all the latest updates, etc. That way you could do um, set up a um, snapshot, work your stuff, and if you run into some issues, we could always roll back. 